Hello. In this video, we will discuss a specific application of the definite integral. You have already seen the definite integral used to calculate the area of a region in the plane. In this video, we will use definite integrals to calculate the volume of a solid using cross sections. What's the big idea? Well, first, we can solve big problems by cutting them into little problems. Then we solve that, those little problems using relatively simple mathematics and sum the solutions to solve the big problem. What's an example? Suppose we want to find the volume of a loaf of bread. One option might be to solve, find the volume using immersion. That would result in soggy bread. Yuck. What if instead we find the volume by first slicing the bread, finding the volume of those slices, and then adding up the volumes of the slices to find the volume of the original loaf? To do that, we'll first set up an axis alongside the loaf of bread. Suppose we have the length of the bread going between A and B. We'll slice the loaf of bread into n slices. If we slice perpendicular to the bottom of the loaf, we'll have our cutting points, t sub 0, t sub 1, t sub 2, up through t sub k, and then up to continuing to t sub n. And if we make the slices thin enough, the slice will have approximately the same cross-sectional area at any point t of the slice. So here we see our cutting points. Here's our first slice between a and t sub 1. Our second slice between t sub 1 and t sub 2. Our kth slice is between t sub k minus 1 and t sub k. And we get our n slices when we continue up through t sub n, which is also equal to b. Suppose we consider the kth slice. The thickness of that slice is determined by t sub k minus t sub k minus 1. And at any t between t sub k minus 1 and t sub k, the cross section of that slice of bread, which is what would cover that surface of the slice, is approximately the same all throughout that slice. Therefore, we can treat that slice of bread as a prism. And we, we know that the volume of a prism is calculated by the area of the base times the height, where the height is the thickness of the slice. Now, for any, suppose for any t, with t between a and b, the function a of t gives the area of the cross-section of the slice at point t. Then I can find the volume of the kth slice of bread to be approximately the cross-sectional area times the thickness. So I would get a of t sub k times t sub k minus t sub k minus 1, which can be rewritten as delta t sub k. So that's the volume of the case slice. To get the volume of the loaf of bread, I simply sum the volumes of the slices, which is approximately the sum k going from 1 to n of a of t sub k times delta t sub k. Now, we let the norm of our partition go to 0. And recall that the norm of the partition is the length of our longest subinterval. So we're going to let the thickness of each slice of bread go to 0, which will produce infinitely many slices. And we will get the definite integral from a to b of a of t dt. Let's see how this works on a different problem. Suppose we have a solid S, which has as its base the region bounded by the graphs of y equals 2 times the square root of x, y equals negative 2 times the square root of x, and x equals 1. For each x and the interval from 0 to 1, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square with one edge in the plane of the base. We want to find the volume of the solid. When we approach these types of problems, we first want to draw sketches, and we want to consider both two and three-dimensional perspectives of the solid. So let's first graph the region, the base. So here we have our x and y axes. We've got our curve, y equals 2 times the square root of x, and our y equals negative 2 times the square root of x. And we're going to have squares rise from that base. So we first give the two-dimensional perspective. The three-dimensional perspective is going to be considered when we draw squares rising from that base. Sometimes it helps to consider another angle. Suppose I say that this is my x-axis. And I'm just going to draw the y-axis a little bit like this. So just from another perspective, here would be y equals 2 times the square root of x, y equals negative 2 times the square root of x. And I could envision the squares rising 
from the base gets closer to one, those squares are going to get larger and larger. And you can consider, since we have squares, you can consider where the line should be parallel and always perpendicular to the x-axis in this case. We can also consider three-dimensional pictures of the solid. In this first picture, I can think of the air. The y-axis is on this back side. The, what we call the z-axis is here. And you can see the squares for our cross-sections. From another perspective, in this second picture, x, the x-axis is here. The y-axis is here, and again, you can see our square cross-sections. And you can also see where the corners of those squares take that parabolic shape um, from our uh, y equals 2 times the square root of x and y equals negative 2 times the square root of x. And then in this third image, back here, we have the y-axis again. We're looking at it straight in directly from the x-axis perspective and you can see those square cross-sections. Okay. So now, let's actually go about finding the volume of the solid. After we've drawn our two and three dimensional perspectives of our solid, we want to find the volume of a kth slice. Well, where does that slice come from? Well, first we have to partition the interval, in this case, from zero to one. So, the left endpoint is that first point of the partition, x sub 0. The right endpoint is the last point of our partition. And we can illustrate that on our diagram. We have 1, uh, x sub k minus 1, x sub k, and then this is x sub n. Next, we want to find the volume of our kth slice of the solid, which we call delta v sub k. Knowing that if we've got slices that are thin enough, delta v sub k is approximately a prism, which means the volume of that slice is approximately the area of the cross-section times the thickness of the slice. Since the cross-section is a square, I know that this is going to be the length of the edge, this edge right here, the length of that edge squared times x sub k minus x sub k minus 1. Well, how do we find the length of the edge? Well, we're told that the edge sits between the curves, and this is the point, if this is x sub k, this would be the point x sub k, 2 times the square root of x sub k. This would be x sub k, negative 2 times the square root of x sub k. Knowing that this length is a distance, and we always want the distance to be a positive quantity, I'm going to take top minus bottom. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of x sub k minus a negative 2 times the square root of x sub k. That's the length of the edge, so that gets squared. And then my thickness is delta x sub k. So this gives the approximate volume of the slice. And when I simplify that, I'm going to get 16 x sub k times delta x sub k. Now to find the volume of the solid, I'm simply going to sum the volumes of the slices, which is approximately the sum k going from 1 to n of delta v sub k, or sum k going from 1 to n of 16 x sub k times delta x sub k. As I let the norm of the partition go to 0, I get the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 16 x dx, where the endpoints of the interval that we partition become the limits of integration. Finishing this integral, I get that we, the volume of the solid is 8 cubic units. Let's summarize the process. To calculate the volume of a solid using cross-sections, we first want to draw two and three-dimensional sketches of the object. We give a partition P of the interval. This partition tells us how to slice up the solid, and we approximate the volume of the kth slice, delta V sub K. We sum the volumes of the slices, giving us the Riemann sum. We find the limit of the Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to zero, resulting in infinitely many very thin slices of the solid, which produces the definite integral. And we find the exact volume of the solid with the definite integral.